so the the most important uh, the other most important thing about the implementation of lung cancer screening is uh, uh, is the necessity of the uh, the necessity to uh, advise uh, advise those patients for uh, cessation of smoking so all those patients who are enrolled in uh, lung cancer screening program um, we need to advise those patients to stop smoking and we need to give them a rehabilitation uh, whatever is necessary to stop uh, further smoking and uh, we need to explain uh, then the benefits of screening and the benefits of early detection so <laughs> we need, but we also uh, need to understand that uh, screening doesn't mean that it prevents lung cancer in screening does not prevent lung cancer please understand uh, me and patients need to be understand all those patients who came for screening need to understand that screening does not prevent uh, lung cancer incidence but it only detect the cancer in early stage and it will prevent uh, the early death so the early uh, the earlier you diagnose a uh, lung cancer patient the more uh, the longer the survival will be so uh, sometimes what happens sometimes some in some cases uh, there might be some over diagnosis of lung cancer uh, or the over diagnosis of uh, lung nodules which might be uh, suspected like uh, suspicious of lung cancer and unnecessary investigations must take place so uh, must have been takes, taken taken place so all these uh, risks we have to explain to the patients before they undergo any screening uh, procedures so uh, after uh, explaining everything and patient understands and give consent then only those patients should be enrolled in lung cancer screening so uh, how do we standardize the screening uh, uh, protocols like uh, if i do uh, ld ct load or ct scan and i i report something and if some other radiologist in some place uh, do ct scan and report in some uh, other manner then it, it doesn't uh, mean anything and doesn't follow a universal rule so what what they did the american college of radiology they developed a uh, uh, reporting system that's like how we have the reporting system for breast cancer screening like the pyrads we call or the prostate cancer as uh, reporting like we call pyrads uh, so we have a lung rats uh, classification system uh, for uh, reporting of uh, lung cancer screening cts so these are all uh, again the the what we call the tools they use these are all the different uh, variables they uh, use for the reporting of those low dose ct uh, according to this they give us the lung rat score to those patients so based on that score uh, we assess the risk of the patients and we then uh, suggest the further uh, screening uh, methods and further follow up dates so uh, so far we have been uh, dealing with the guidelines from us preventive services task force so there are other uh, uh, associations which also recommends uh, lung cancer screening uh, but in more or less in a similar manner like the american association of thoracic surgery they recommend screening of those people from 55 to 79 uh, previously uh, they said 50 to 80 now these people are saying 55 to 79 years 30 pack year history here there it was uh, what uh, 20 pack years here they said 30 pack year history and uh, if you see american cancer society and the, the acs they also recommend cancer screening for 55 to 74 years so more or less uh, it is again uh, the 50s to uh, 80 so here it is 55 to 74 uh, years who are in fairly good health and have at least 30 pack years smoking history before like uh, before 2021 even the us preventive task force also uh, used to follow the 30 pack year uh, guideline but what happened uh, lately after the results of those two uh, nelson trial and nslt trial so what happened they reduced the pack years to 20 pack years even if the patient is uh, even if the person is having 20 uh, pack years history smoking history then it is still considered as a significant risk factor uh, i i i hope uh, everyone of you know what is a pack year 
the pack here is nothing but a uh, smoke one pack uh, in us is considered as 20 smokes like 20 cigarettes so if a person is smoking 20 cigarettes every day throughout the year, like 365 days in a year then that is considered as one pack year so if a person is having 20 pack year history means the, the, that person is smoking at least one pack of cigarettes at least 20 cigarettes per day for a period of 20 years okay i hope uh, you understood this thing and I, everybody everybody might be knowing this thing but i just want to clarify here so uh, uh, in oncology community the most commonly followed guidelines is nccn guidelines nccn guidelines uh, again they say that uh, this lung cancer screening should be followed from age of 55 so here uh, what they did they just uh, averaged all those three guidelines and they made a final guideline so this is like what uh, all patients of age 55 to 77 with a uh, smoking history of 30 pack year should be considered for lung cancer screening. So uh, if you go in detail uh, about uh, lung cancer screening and if you see the NCCN guidelines, you can see uh, they assess the patient. So how they assess? They assess this, uh, the smoking history. Is there an exposure to the radon? Or what, is, what, is, what is the occupation of the patient? Some patients who work in asbestos uh, industry or some patients who work in like uh, the silica industry. So those patients are again uh, vulnerable patients. They get some occupational uh, cancers. So the patient's cancer history, family history, so all those the history of any COPD or any smoking history from the family members because massive smoking, uh, again, in recent times, massive smoking uh, has increased the incidence of lung cancer. There's 20% of uh, risk to the family members if, if any one person in the family is smoking. So uh, again, uh, they uh, strat stratify those patients according to high risk and low risk groups. So high risk is more than 50 years, more than 20 back years, as I said, as we discussed earlier. So according to that, they uh, then suggest the screening program. So if, if they qualify in the high risk group, then they are uh, entered into the lung cancer program. Then what, what they do, they, uh, they, after the reporting of this low dose CT, what they look for, they look for lung nodules. So lung nodules again are classified into solid nodules, partly solid nodules are non-solid nodules. So they are again classified according to the size criteria. Like uh, if you see here, the six six mm is the uh, what is the threshold. If, if it is less than six mm, then it is okay. They are they are uh, considered to be uh, normal nodules. It can happen in any other disease. So it's okay. So if it is more than six mm, then uh, depending on the size criteria, they again uh, call the patients for an interval uh, load of CT, like six months or three months. If it is more than fifteen mm, then uh, those patients are considered suspicious and they will be subject to further investigations or further diagnostic tests. So then again, different uh, approaches for different types of lung nodules. So here again, we have the risks and benefits of uh, lung cancer screening. What are the risks? So then we have uh, the chance of false positive uh, lung cancer so it is can be fetal detection sometimes and the quality of life can be uh, deteriorated in some patients it's like if some person is having anxiety then those patients will be very anxious uh, whenever they go for test the what is what is it going to be will i get a lung cancer this is what uh, happens with most uh, many patients they get the anxiety now, until the report comes, those patients will be very anxious uh, about it. So the level of anxiety will increase with the screening again. And uh, physical physical complications again uh, because of this false positive uh, alarms like 
so sometimes what happens there there are some multiple uh, diagnostic tests should be uh, conducted on those patients and that again can lead to uh, physical complications again as i said false positive and false negative results may happen uh, radiation exposure again uh, even if it is less like uh, as i said what is the radiation we use in a lot of cities one tenth of normal diagnostic x-ray still it's a significant uh, radiation exposure okay so, uh, so that is again a risk and cost again uh, city is not cheap as i said in india at least uh, we know that uh, any city chance is the cost it will cost around uh, anywhere from 2000 to 5000 rupees in any normal center so cost is again a risk factor uh, there are incidental lesions so we may find some incidental lesions not only in lungs, we, can, we may find in many other areas also. So that is again a risk. Uh, now, what are the benefits? So the benefits again, again, we can identify the cancers in the early stage. So the mortality of lung cancer can be decreased a little bit. The quality of life will be better. So uh, the idea is here: if you see, uh, if you can, if a patient is having uh, stage one lung cancer undetected. It can go to stage four in no time, like within uh, what, uh, three to six months, the stage one lung cancer can progress into stage four lung cancer because uh, most of the times the pathology of this lung cancer is very bad and uh, it is very aggressive disease. But if you diagnose these patients at early stage, then the, the, the quality of life will be much, much better because you can give these patients longer survival rates and longer uh, with a good quality of life.